what I'm presenting on is Whiteboard FI, which is a free online whiteboard tools for using in your classroom. Now, I was trying to find something that I could replicate what I did in school. So in school, I don't actually use show me boards at all because I find that they're too small for what I use them for. So we actually graffiti the desks, as the kids would say. I give them a dry whiteboard and they get to draw things on the, the desks. So we draw wireframes, structured diagrams, flowcharts. Um, I'll have a top level design on my board and I'll ask them to refine a particular step with it. Or I would write CSS declarations, get them to do that, or writing standard algorithms out, just trying to get that into their heads. Um, so that's what I'm trying to replicate but I'm trying to do that online. So I'm in a Microsoft Teams authority. So we have Microsoft Whiteboard built into our Teams and it is a single whiteboard. And it can be quite good because you can stop the kids writing on it, but when you do let them write on it, it's a free for all and it's one board. So it's quite difficult to control who draws and where they draw. So I'm trying to find a different solution. I needed something that was free. Um, I wanted something that I could see and control all the boards um, and I wanted the students to have a, a board each and given that um, my authority had put a halt on any data protection assessments being passed I needed something that didn't need one so and I was lucky actually that I found three <laughs> um, this is the the pricing structure for um, whiteboard FI this is the option that I go for, but do not be put off the fact that there is a whole load scored out and that everything else seems to be in the other ones. Okay, It still does plenty that you want to do. There is an absolute no sign up option at all. So you, you don't even need to create an account and you can just create a class and away you go. There is an account option if you sign up for it, but the free version is exactly the same as the no sign up. The only thing you don't have to do every time with the sign up is enter your teacher name. Um, you get a free trial for the first seven days of the premium subscription, so you get to play with all the bells and whistles for seven days, and then it disappears. <laughs> so I am going to stop sharing that bit, and I'm actually going to then show you this. So this is me created, uh, if I can get into the chat, what I'm going to do is just fire the link in there. So that is the link to the board, but I'm also going to put this on. Okay, because some of the kids that I have are sitting with a mobile phone and they like to do it on a phone while I'm in a Teams meeting so that they can see my screen, but they're also doing this on a phone. Now, Whiteboard FI says that there is no maximum number of whiteboards you can have in a single session but they do suggest that you try and keep it below 50. Um, I'm laughing because I can see that some folk are already actually graffitiing their whiteboards. There is always one. <laughs> so if you're on you will be able to see my board by toggling. So this is my board and you will see underneath it here's all the kids boards. Okay. I have already gone and added a whole load of things. Now, when I've done this with classes, I've had this as for the first time. So I've said, on your board, say hi. Bonus if you can change the colour. Bonus if you can figure out how to change the line width of that colour. Add an emoji, draw a triangle and change the page background. Um, obviously, you need to give them a minute or two to then go and doodle all over the board because I found that when I tried to do this without giving them time to kind of work out their system and um, they were too busy trying to do this and didn't actually want to get one with a lesson so it was a wee bit dodgy so I can see that some are really doing well <laughs> okay and I can put my board off if I don't want to see that and I want to just see what everybody else is doing you can see that it, it is working in live time if your internet connection is pretty poor, you can actually switch that off and make it that the students have to save it first before you'll actually see the results. And that might actually be quite interesting not to see what's going on and then do that. But I've never actually tried it. OK, so there, there is always that moment when you're about to toggle off your whiteboard and onto the pupils one where you haven't seen what they're working on. 
and I'm doing this normally in a live video session just like this. So when I switch off my board and I see all the kids, there is that moment that you really hope there's nothing dodgy on one of the whiteboards. Um, and thankfully, right, there is. So, Craig, what I'm going to show you is if somebody's done something really, really inappropriate, none of these things work in the free version, unfortunately, but you actually could just kick them. Okay, so you have the, the option to kick a kid out. I'll be kind to, to you and not put you out, Craig, but I could. Um, to make sure that he can't come back in, because obviously I've just shared the link straight into the meeting chat, what I can now do is lock the room so that nobody else can now join back in. So if you kick somebody out, lock the room. If you're kind of giving them naughty step treatment, you could actually just put them in the lobby. So you can enable the a lobby. Um, you can do that before the the room starts. You can enable a lobby, okay, and you can lock it once you've got everybody in, and then nobody else can get the join code and join it, okay. So, how I use this in my classes, what I've been doing is I'll have something like this, and with a scenario, and then I'll say to the kids, right, go and go and draw me the answer, write the answer down. So a child can be looking at this and then toggling between their board and my board so that they can see what I'm doing. OK, if I come down a wee bit, you can see that I've loaded a whole bunch of boards, but the kids can't see them. They only see the board that you're currently on. Now, I can actually go through my other boards and the kids still can't see what I've got. They still only see this active board because that's the one that's got the wee eye on it. If I wanted to show them this one, I need to click underneath. And now everybody can see this. So what I want to do is everyone to get this. Now, I'm going to push it just to the students and I'm just pushing the current page rather than every single page that I have in my whiteboard. You might want to load your lesson and then just actually just shove all pages out to the kids and say to them, I want you to be on page two. So you can see that these are now beginning to filter through. They are completely scrubbing the kids' boards of what they had and replacing it with what I've just put on it. Okay, so this one doesn't look like it's working. So I'm going to go to this one and push it just to that pupil so that I don't overwrite everybody's boards. I'm just going to push it to hers or his. This was a good one. Okay, so you can see that, that if it doesn't push, then you can go to that. Now, I just pushed it as a, a normal thing but I didn't set this as a background. So what could happen to Snow, instead of them doodling all over it, somebody could actually delete it. Any takers up on that one? <laughs> Anybody want to try and delete their background? There we go. Well done, Kathy. 10 out of 10. So because it wasn't a background image, they've been able to delete the background. Okay. So as soon as I saw this, I actually did think, oh, well, I could pay picture Rika with my fourth years as a reward on a Friday. So this is where this came actually came from this bit. Um, so you can do that, but that does cause issues if you don't put it as the background, if you don't want the kids to be able to move it. Now, there are a couple of things you can do about this. I can flatten the image here and it will just shove everything to the background. So you can see that I can't move it around any longer. When you're pushing it, you can just push it as a background and it does exactly the same thing. When we're having a look at the toolbar up the top, everything works on it apart from two things. You can't upload a PDF in the free version and you can't save a library, but everything else works. OK, so when I had said about the pricing options, don't think, well, like there's nothing in the free version. There's lots in here. OK, so other things that I have been using it for, things like this. So I've got a bit of a scenario and this is picking out end user requirements and functional requirements. So again, push that one and then you would get the kids to draw around the bits that they think is a functional requirement and which one's a user requirement. Um, you can see that because I can skip through here, if my kids were really getting this and I'm thinking, right, I don't want to do this page, I'm just going to skip on to the next one. You can absolutely do that and the kids would never see that. They also have a plus and minus button. So MD want to add a page onto theirs, oh look, <laughs> and some aren't at all. Okay, so 
here we go this one has got page two and unfortunately and i've now put them back and put them onto this one these ones have got a different page unfortunately i can't make them go back onto the page that i want because i can't get that kind of control it would be a case of either saying to the pupil can you go back to the, that page and if they can't get back there or they won't get back there then you can just push your background onto them you can push your board to them again okay so kinds of things that i have been using it for you can see that um this one and this one are straight out of a past paper now all i've done is done a screen clipping of the pdf and just pasted it in just control and d and stuck it in and um, same with that one this one obviously i've taken a bit of html and then i've added some text up the top so if i get rid of that wee thing here i've just added some text in here of what i want them to do so obviously they're going to look at this and then try and pick out the bit where the javascript is um, other things I've used it for is plenaries. So three things you've learned today, two questions you still have, and a thing that made you say, wow. Which is usually, can we draw on this in the end, miss? So quite often I get asked if I can just um, clear the boards and let them doodle. If I want to save this at any point, so what I can do is save all the whiteboards as a PDF. Now, it won't say, like, if the kids have got a whole load, a bunch of here, it won't save all four of them. It just saves the one that they're on. So you're probably going to have to save, you know, if you want the evidence of it, you're going to have to save after every single board before the kids get rid of it and download it. Pupils can also download their own as an image. You can't invite a co-teacher on the free version, but you can when it is the seven-day trial. So I've had people in my school invite a co-teacher um, because they weren't very confident in doing it so they got somebody else in while they were on their seven day trial you can also clear all the student whiteboards so i can just get rid of everything for everybody and it should eventually go um okay the ones with the wee person with a score through it, that is somebody who's been inactive for five minutes. And again, you can't make them active. The pupil has to do that for themselves. And there's Craig that's managed to hang on in there. He's keeping his board. <laughs> and this is what happens quite often. Um, as I say, you do need to give them time to just kind of get all of this nonsense out of their system. The first time I've used every single class I've used it with, th this is the kind of thing that you get the first time okay so pretty much that is it so everything up here works apart from a couple of things there is a maths equation thing editor if you wanted you can use that so you can change this to And then insert your maths if that's what you're into okay so it gives you some ideas of, of what i have been using it for so i can either put a scenario up here and just leave the kids with a plain whiteboard and they just work between looking at mine and looking at theirs and um, if it was to draw something you know i would maybe give them a scenario up here and then say uh, you know draw a wireframe for that or you know draw the height the structure of that website or whatever so you can do it that way or you can actually just put stuff onto your whiteboard and then push it out to them and get them to write on top of it either or works really well um when you're all done and you've saved everything that you want to save you can just close your room so it tells you that the room is successfully closed and it should say on the student ones that your teacher closed the room for you so in terms of just creating a room it is just a place of clicking on new class you need to put your name in if you've not got a, an account with them but that's it and it doesn't take any data from the pupils either so they just enter a name when they're going in and therefore everything closes down and it's just all deleted after you've finished your classroom and you've finished your session so there's no dpia in there either that i needed to worry about so so that's me i hope that was useful guys <laughs>